Hi, today we're going to be going over a few steps um, that are needed to start using Google Meet. Now, it's the first time you use Google Meet. It's um, pretty simple. I, I liked it. It, it does um, serve a good purpose. So here we go. You get onto your Google. Um, in this case, this is my Google homepage. And once you're on your Google homepage, you locate the buttons on the right hand corner, the menu buttons, which are these up here. Let me um, circle them in a darker color. These right here. Okay. So once you click on these, you will get the drop down menu and you want to select the Google Meet icon, which is this one right here. It'll then take you to join to this page. So you're going to want to join or start a meeting. Now, if you're a teacher that's holding virtual meetings with your students, this is exactly where you need to be. OK, so you want to select this option. And you'll get the option of entering a name or um, you can leave it blank. It's up to you. Okay. Once you enter the name here, if you choose to, you can hit continue and it'll bring you to your meeting. Now, here is where I normally, before I join the meeting, I normally turn off my camera, which I can do from here. Let me see. I can do from here or I and I turn off my microphone, which I can do from here. So this is for your camera and this is for your microphone. I normally have both off until um, right before I join the meeting and then I don't turn them back or I don't turn them back on until my participants, all my participants are have joined the meeting. So you once you've decided whether you're going to turn them the microphone and camera on or off you select join now okay and then this is where you have two options on how you will you can invite um, your participants you have option one which you can copy and paste this link and send it via email or however else you want to send it. Or you can go here to add people. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to mention that I made the mistake when I was just starting off using Google Meet of copying all this. And, you know, to me, it, it pretty much made sense. Um, dial in. This is for people that either don't want to use their audio on their computer or can't use the audio on their computer and want to use it off their phone or people that don't want, can't or don't want to join the actual virtual meeting, but they want to listen in. Um, but I did create confusion doing this so that I would suggest not doing this. OK, so don't send out the dial in because if you're a teacher like me, you're all you're doing is wanting to hold the virtual meeting with your student. And this will create some somewhat of confusion if parents are not um, tech savvy. OK, so once you have uh, selected the method that you want to invite your participants. Um, I'll show you this is what it looks like when you are choosing to add them um, with the plus button. OK, so add people so you can either invite them by entering their name or email. And then down here, it'll give you a few options of the people that you have recently been in contact with in regards to 
your email or also in regards to your virtual meetings, okay? So these people here I've had virtual meetings with, so that's why they popped up there. So you can select them just if they're commonly used, um, if their email is commonly used in, in your meeting invites, then they'll show up there. <clears throat> okay, so once you select all your people, um, you, it'll prompt you to send invite and that button will be down here at the bottom and you'll just click on that and it'll take you to your meeting page. Okay, it'll appear like this until uh, people start joining and or you change the options down here with the camera. Once somebody arrives, you will hear a beep though. Okay, so like don't don't um don't think that your camera's off and you're not going to be able to tell when they get there it the uh, the system actually alerts you you you'll hear a beep and a lot of times their camera will be on so you'll be able to see and hear them okay so on this page i do want to go over a few things okay if you look down here on the right hand side these three buttons are um there are a menu. This menu gives you access to recording a meeting, changing your layout, full screen, captions, which is really cool. I've used that before. I liked it and so on. So you can further explore these options. Um, I've used the, like I said, turn on your captions and I've kind of, depending on how many people are on the call, I've used changing my layout. Okay. The second button, which is probably if you're a teacher, um, what you're going to use a lot of, and that is pre the present now button. Now, um, what this does is that this allows your audience to view your screen. So you're kind of screen sharing with them. If you have something in particular that you want to show the whole class, then uh, you can you can use this feature now. I used it um, a couple times and um, I'm, it took me a while to get used to it and to become familiar with it, but I used this with playing, I actually played a game with, of Kahoot with my kids on Friday and I teach kindergarten, so it was really cool. It was pretty easy. Um, they got it, they, they knew that they were gonna be able to see my screen and it helped us all connect really well. It was a lot of fun also. And my kids really enjoyed it. So you have these two options. You can present your entire screen and or you can present a window. Now let me show you what your what it's gonna look like if you present your entire screen. If you select print, uh, to present your entire screen, you're gonna get this option and you're gonna click here um, to select this option and then you're gonna go to share. If you don't click here, then this share option will be grayed out, okay? This is if you're sharing a window option. So it's gonna ask you which window you wanna share. And then again, if you notice the share option is grayed out because I hadn't selected this one or this one or this window um, to share with my audience. Okay, so then if you hit continue, you hit share from there and then they'll go ahead and, and your audience will be able to see. Okay, and this is what you'll see when you're um, when you're sharing. Okay, so when you want to stop sharing your screen, um, and right now in a little bit, I'm going to show you exactly how I played Kahoot with my kids, but it, when you want to stop sharing, this down here is your menu, your sharing menu, okay? So you hit stop sharing, and then that'll, you won't be sharing your screen anymore with your audience. Okay. So this is what I did um, when I finally got a little more comfortable using this with my students is um, I opened a new tab or a new window, okay, 
um, in my browser. So this option allows you to make your window smaller. So it'll make my screen smaller. And I was basically cutting my screen in half and um, you'll see what it looks like in a bit um, so that each window wouldn't overlap so that my students could see exactly um, when we were playing Kahoot what the question was and then I wanted to see their reactions I wanted to see them also playing the game and I wanted them to see each other so this is what I did okay so you go to new window and then okay it'll populate a new window which is this one the the Kahoot window okay and to get a new window what I did is I used this option here the three buttons so if you click those three buttons the menu will pop up and it'll it'll say um, open new or new window so you click that and then you just uh, customize this however big or small you want each side so as you could see on the right hand side this is the Kahoot game screen and then on this side of course right now my students are not on so you can't see them all but on on the left hand side is where my I could see my students and their reactions and I could see it was like you know like a live session of of uh, Kahoot so um, so yeah this this was fun this worked out very very well and and we were um it, you know it, it, of course it's it's we're still not in class it's not the same but my students were able to actually um involve their parents and parents got to see how their kids love this game and you know all i did is i let the parents know that i was going to be sending a link and that we were going to play around a certain time and whoever could join joined and whoever couldn't we would touch base during the week and possibly change the times um so that uh, to accommodate as many of my students as possible because of course i want them all to you know participate because i know that they all love love playing so um yeah we did this on friday and it was a lot of fun okay uh so then um, I was getting a lot of questions on, okay, I understand that I can, I, I'm the organizer of the meeting, that I can present and share my screen, but can my students um, share their screen with me and, or the rest of the, the group? So let's say, you know, if you want to assign a project and you still want to try to make your students uh, present in class. So you, I got questions on, can my students do that? And the answer is yes, they can actually. So as you could see to demonstrate what I did is I logged on the meeting into the um into our meeting from my phone so over here on the left hand side this is the google home page from my telephone so i was playing with it and um you know depending on what um what i brought up was exactly what you saw here on on um on presenting so what i did is the your audience also has these similar buttons that are right here and um from my phone it was here it was in the buttons and i clicked on the buttons and it said um also it, it said present now i believe and then um i clicked on that and it prompted the organizer, which was of me, uh, that I was trying to present from another device as, as a student. And, um, and I allowed it to go through. So that's how um, I was able to present like a student from my phone. So you may have to kind of um, play with it a little bit more 
and I'm going to see, um, you know, try to <clears throat> log in more to as a student and, you know, with some colleagues to see if, if how it works from your desktop it, or from a laptop, from a iPad, from a Chromebook. But it was very easy from my phone. So it's probably as easy from another device. Okay, so um, there you go. There's that. That's the number one question I, I've, I've actually gotten. So there's your answer. And I, if I helped you with that, I'm, I'm glad that I could at least help one of my teacher colleagues because I know we're all trying to get used to this. So that's it. Those are the basic steps that um, I took in getting familiar with Google Meet. And um, I, I don't know, it's pretty easy. And it was, you know, I, I had a walkthrough with my, with my students and their parents to kind of guide them the first time around. And I did use, um, with one of them, I did try out the screen sharing and um, it, it did help a little bit. And she said it was fairly easy. So, um, you know, it, try it out with your students and if you have any other questions any comments anything else I can help you with let me know